James, and I'm not exactly back in the shop again. It's a beautiful day. It's uh, April 5th, and even though the snow is still on the ground a little bit, uh, it's 62 degrees, and we're going to start a new project. I'm standing next to my Aspen log pile, and my next project is going to be building a bunk bed with Aspen logs, a rustic bunk bed. So I've picked out a few logs that we're going to process, and uh, stick around. I don't know how many videos this will take to get it done, but we're going to go step by step and uh, show you how it's done. So stay tuned. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you may recognize this jig that I made that holds logs while you peel the bark and sand them. I've mounted it onto the outside of my shop because the last time I tried processing a log, it made such a mess that I figured I might as well do it outside. So let's hook up a log. I have four that I've picked out that are going to be the bed posts and we'll get them set up and start stripping them down. take my knife and just peel the bark off first. So this is what we're looking for uh, with the bark removed and just a light sanding leaving just enough of the color in the log to keep the beauty of the variegated colors. Variegated, is that a good word? Um, so what we'll do then is just rotate the log 90 de uh, 180 degrees, do the other side, flip it around and do it again and we'll have one log done. So, like I said, I'm not sure uh, how many videos it's going to take to make this bunk bed, but um, I'll be back when I've done maybe 18 to 22 logs, because that's how many it's going to take to make this bed. So stay tuned. So, first thing we do is drill a half an inch deep hole with a half inch drill into the ends of each end of the log. And then we'll mount it in our jig and finish the hole. Now, this drill bit is deep enough. This is a hardened steel sleeve. And by the time I finish cutting this hole, it'll be six inches deep on each side of the log. So there's one. camera angle and show you how we actually cut the tenon on each end of the spindle and then I will repeat it for all 18 of the spindles. 
So let me change the camera and we'll get started with that. Okay, so I'm going to explain first because once I turn on my dust collection and start this off, you won't be able to hear me. Um, I'm going to mount uh, the log onto this threaded uh, connector. It's a flexible shaft. And that's so I can spin it when I get it onto this shaft here. I'll spin it with the blade turning and it'll cut the log put a tenon on it and then I'll pull it back out while it's spinning and it'll finish the cut. Um, now the, the way the tenon thickness is determined is of course by how high the blade is and I've got that pretty well adjusted to within ten thousandths of doing a two inch tenon. So let me turn everything on and we'll cut one or two of them and show you how it works. That's how we're going to cut all the tenons for this log bed. And let me get my uh, measuring device here. And you can see that I am ten thousandths under two inches, which is perfect for a glue joint. Um, I use a two inch mortise, uh, excuse me, Forstner bit to drill the mortises. So when I get all 20, excuse me, uh, 18 of these cut, we'll be back and do some drilling and some assembly. So stay tuned. Okay, now comes an interesting part of the assembly. This log here is 82 inches long and it's going to be the top rail where all the spindles, safety spindles come down. And they're going to be spaced every eight inches except for on the end they'll be at seven inches so it's seven and then every eight and then seven and so we cut the tenon on the log and I've measured in two inches and I'm going to put these blocks on the ends they have a two, uh, two inch hole cut in them and I'm going to put a screw down the top to lock them in place. Now what that gives me is a perfect, no matter how the log wiggles or waves, with this fence that I built onto the jig, I mean the uh, drill press, I can cut logs up to eight feet long. And because I'm using these blocks, I can drill perfectly 90 degree holes in a perfect line by just sliding it down the fence and then if I need uh, uh, another hole going 90 degrees away I can just rotate the block and I'll have a perfect 90 degree um, hole off of another direction. So I'm going to set this up and uh, drill the holes and then fit the tenons in and show you how that works. So let me set up the camera and we'll go to town. Okay, everything's lined up, and this block marks my, this edge of my block marks my zero point. 
So if I put that at seven inches on my yard sticks, I'll be drilling a hole centered seven inches from this end. And then I'll move it down to the 15 inch mark and go every eight inches and we'll get nine holes drilled. And hopefully it's set to the right depth. If not, we'll readjust and do it again. So here goes. set up and I'll show you how the tenons fit in. So I'm here at the bench and I have nine of the spindles picked out and what I like to do is if I have a thin one I'll use it next to two thick ones and just to try to keep the spacing even. So these should fit right into the holes like this. Because if you go all the way down and bottom out, these will all be the exact same length on this end, even though the uh, log is wavy. facing out. So once you get them in, you turn them until you get the most attractive side facing out. There's a lot of character in these logs. So this one will be facing out and this is the end piece here. So as you can see they all line up uh, depth wise. So I will go ahead and cut the bottom rail. Now the bottom rail is going to be the rail that actually holds the mattress so that's going to be a bigger log and instead of a two inch tenon it's going to be a three inch tenon to fit into the to fit into these posts um, so I will come back when that log is ready it's the same procedure as this and then we'll glue this up and use uh, uh, what do you call them binding straps um, to uh, clamp them up while they're drying so stay tuned, we're getting there. 